Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it is Monday. It's August 1st. This will be our chart lesson for the day, and we're we finished July, and we're starting another month, if you can believe it or not. Uh, we're going into August, so the next couple of weeks, school will start back in most places, and things will probably pick back up, and people will come back from vacation. So it could get as crazy as it has been. It could get crazier, so just be prepared for that. Generally, June and July and early August are probably the slowest months of the trading year. So, I mean, it doesn't look like, I mean, you can see we have kind of bounced around and I mean, look what we were having here. And then we just kind of, you can see it towards the end of June through July. And it looks like it's already starting to pick up here the last week or so of July. But I believe that's just because they're running stops there. As prices go higher, people are taking profits. These people that were short or that got short right here, they all figured out, hey, if I don't get close out now, I'm going to give all these profits back. And they start closing out and it just goes higher. So they're running stops, basically. We should be, uh, we were still severely overbought here. And you can see we're above that brown line. We still closed above it today. It looked like we were going to get a reversal day today. Not quite, but uh, I'm still looking for prices to retest these lows. Uh, it could be that we've got another channel working up here that it might have to play out first. But the targets I was looking for was here, here, and here. We didn't quite get that one today, but that may be close enough. I may not have it in exactly the right spot. Maybe it's... Maybe it's more like this right here. Uh, if so, then we've we've met that target now. So we'll just have to kind of see. That was the red, and I uh, had these red. The red was pointing at the measured move based on the range, and the blue was pointing at uh, retesting this breakout area. And so the next one was retesting the breakout from the pink across here. And then the next one after that, if we go higher, will be this high right in here. So we shall see where prices are going. Uh, again, at some point, I'm expecting this thing to turn down and uh, shoot down again. Uh, I could be wrong, and the, the chart could change as well. But that's still what we're looking for at the moment. So uh, and it's 5 o'clock. You can see that um, just right there as I was talking, this uh, price has opened right here. And so far, they opened slightly lower. So... Uh, we could we could turn down here now and and start trending lower. We'll just have to see. Uh, we're definitely way overbought, so a sell off is imminent. But sometimes these rallies can go much further and long, last longer than you think they will. So don't guess at it. Wait till the chart shows you, and wait till the chart gives you what you need to see. But anyway, let's flip over to the 2000 tick intraday chart. We'll go through the trades. Not a lot of them today. It was another one of those wild days where the swings are in both directions and just not a lot of clear trading. But we'll we'll look at it here in just a second. But here we go. Here's a high level look at the 2000 tick chart. You can see we made a leg up, got a break, ran to a new high. And normally I would not draw a trend line on these. This is like the retest of this. But in this case, we kind of formed another channel, and you can see they tried to retest that high, but it's really because this is not necessarily a channel. You still can draw these and get an idea of what the trend's looking like. But generally, these retest attempts, I do not draw. Just like here, you uh, on the way down, notice you got the channel that's real tight when you get a break, and then this moved down, and I didn't draw that one. So generally, when you, and here's one coming down, you get a break, and there's the one moving down, and I don't usually draw that trend because it um, doesn't mean you can't draw it. I just generally don't draw it for clarity and to keep it a little simpler. Um, but anyway, let's. Uh, you can see it. There's no consistent highs, really, no consistent lows. We're just running up, running down. Really, the midline was kind of the deciding point. We, uh, we bounced on and around and off that all day and we kind of closed pretty much right at it, you can see there. So uh, just one of those days where it's, the only thing you can really trade are these trends. And even they're not all real clear. So uh, let's uh, zoom in here, go through the trades. There's another thing here, too. Uh, 
another reason why I drew this one today is notice the overshoot. So sometimes you don't get a retest. So this could just be another channel working up. I didn't get that feeling. Uh, it looked like they were going to be, this yellow one was going to be valid, but in the end, it's really not. It looks like it was this one. We had the break here, moved to a new low, and then we reversed. I left this one on here. Uh, and we do get a play off of it right here. So it still was helpful, but in the end, we never got a confirmation. We just reversed and went higher. So I think this this was the trend coming down. And, and sometimes people ask me, they'll draw this one, and maybe I only drew one, or I drew this one and didn't draw the bigger one. And they'll say, well... You know, yours was different in mine. Which one was right? Well, they're both right. Somebody asked me that about this little channel here. There's there's a trend channel working up here, and then you get a break and you move to a new high, but it keeps going. So you just get a new trend right there. I didn't mean to snap on that. And in the big picture, there's the blue channel. So those are they're they're lower level trends and trend channels, and that happens. And you really couldn't draw the bigger one until you got the third touch here. I really thought this was going to be a correction and a new low, but it keeps going. So you draw it and you go with it. And yeah, that's for somebody new, that's almost impossible. You just do not have the experience to see and recognize what's going on. Just know that once you see prices racing up, look for a trend line or a trend channel and draw it. And don't argue with it. Uh, because your skills are not going to be good enough to know that we what's really going on here most likely and that's just that's just the way it goes until you get enough experience and you start to realize so you know people ask me well how'd you know it was going on? I didn't know it was going on. I just drew the trend lines and I go with it that's it it's that simple but I, I do this every day for 20 plus years it gets easier so uh, there's no easy way there's no secret sauce just just draw your trend lines and go with them and when, when they fail and, you know, don't sit here all the way up and say, we're expecting a retest down here. Just say, hey, something's changed. I either read it wrong or something's changed and I'm going, well, what's up here now? And that's what you do. But people will sit here and try to sell this all the way up because they think they're supposed to get a retest of this low. Well, come to find out this channel wasn't valid and we only would get a retest of this real thin cayenne colored one and there's the turn down you get a new low and it's going the other way yeah i thought too that we'd probably test these lows but once i see it going higher right there i'm not gonna argue with it i'm getting on board and going with it i'm at least draw my trend channel i don't really see a good trade to get on board with that but you better bet i'm gonna draw my trend line and if i get a good setup i'm gonna take it And that's pretty much what that looks like right there. All the way up. It looks like you get a close outside right there, but it's not real convincing. Then you get a close outside, move to a new high, and then it sells off. And, of course, you had this darker color one here, and it does it does bounce there. So you got to go with it, but it quickly gets a break. And it tries several times here to make a new high, and it can't, and then it sells off. So... You know, maybe so. This blue one's maybe like the yellow. Maybe we're not gonna get a retest. And, and just go with what you see. And you know, you got one up, one down. Uh, this was really a retest of this one because that's the first. These are the first. Actually, you got a close outside on the bullish bar here. So maybe this is a separate one working up. It didn't really matter. I played it that this was the channel working up. I really believe. It's more like that. And you do get a close outside, even though they're bullish bars. They Let me zoom in there a little bit. You can see they close outside. And then you get a new high, and it's coming down. You get a close outside, new low. And so, more than likely, there is a channel right there. And it looks like you get an overshoot on this one, then it just turns. So, once it starts doing this, that's sideways action. And that's hard to read, because you don't know what prices are doing. All you can do is draw these trend lines or these trend channels, trend lines, whatever, and go with them and draw your little sideways stuff because it you don't know. Prices are still trying to work higher here, but they can't. And then eventually they start going lower. That's what prices do. They'll test one way. If they can't go. They'll go finally test the other side, and they'll keep going until they finally find the bottom and keep testing and then go the other way. And so 
You just have to keep, you have to stay with it. And that's how that works. So I didn't mean it's 10 minutes worth. Let's get back to the trades here. Uh, but I think that was important stuff that was worth talking about. 7 o'clock came. Unfortunately, this signal bar set up here after 7, I mean before 7 o'clock. So unless you were, if you were here, maybe you take that trade and just try to ride it back to the EMA. If you do, that's probably the only trade you need today. But if you don't get in right there, there's no other chance to trade this all the way down until you get a second entry right here. Uh, notice a new low, first entry, second entry. And you would expect a new low. That's a pretty strong spike and channel down. Uh, notice here it doesn't go very far. I marked this green because it's got the two bar matching high. It does break lower right there. So you can't really use this for your signal bar. So you really have to wait on this one. And then you got to go short one tick lower and you, you have just enough room to get out of that with six ticks. Actually, there might be a little bit more because you do get out of this with six ticks. Um, that's still a pretty nice setup. So, and very rarely will a setup like that fail on you. Uh, unless there's some reason it should, it's still what it is. It's still trying to make a new high and it finally does. And then it runs on down and makes the new low. But notice here, I didn't draw this, but notice here, there's a channel working up and you get a close outside. It tries to go higher once and then you get a second leg up that makes a new high and then it sells off. And then there's a little this is the retest coming back for this one, so I didn't draw it like I talked about. There's no real setups there. You can't go short right into that support. Um, you might, if it wasn't for the congestion here, you might go short right there. But there's some congestion, so I'd skip that trade. Uh, lower high here, like I said, too much support. Drops down here. Get a higher low here, but it's right back into support, which might turn into resistance. Notice how it holds its resistance there. It ends up breaking through, but you don't know if it will or not, and you've got to be concerned about it. Then we're just chopping around, and finally, you come back to that trend line, which is right off those bars there, and you get a little failed break lower, and that actually breaks one tick lower than the red bearish bar there and turns up. You could ride that as an engulfing. I'd wait for this to close. And when it closes bullish, I like going long one tick above it. And off it goes. There's a higher low here. Uh, but, I mean, it's just congestion again. It does close just above the, the resistance there. But I don't think you can go long there. Just sit tight. Same thing here. There's just no setups to go long or short. Runs on up, and, and you're just not getting any setups here. This one does come back to the trend line. It's just a first entry, though. Um, it's a fairly bullish bar. It's not perfect. And uh, there's no trap there, really. There's no... It just bounces off the trend line and continues higher. But it does it all in one bar. So it's just a little convoluted. I mean, if it wasn't a first entry, then maybe you take... And you might even argue, hey, that's two legs back. So it's one that, you know, if you really want to be aggressive, that's probably the one because it's off the key entry point. And then we come back down, we're chopping along, we go back up and we finally get the overshoot. And then there's just nothing here. There is a little prices. Uh, I think they make an equal high here. I don't think that breaks lower. 38.50. Thirty-eight fifty. Yeah, if that would have broke higher and turned down and went on through and closed real bearish down here, maybe you take that one because you figure with that overshoot that we're going to at least go back to the trend line, uh, or we may overshoot it, or we may just reverse. And unfortunately, there's no way to get in this again. Another nice move, chops around, breaks out of this little range here, comes back up to this trend line. This is almost like a repeat of this right here just in reverse and nice bearish bar i like going short there and again you get a fairly nice move out of that one runs down it looks like this yellow trend line is going to be valid technically this should be back up here like so and you can see it is playing off that midline down through there 
but we never get a confirmation of it. It just turns down. There's a lower high here. It's way too far away from the EMA to be going short. And you see it quickly reverses. Um, there's a failed second entry short when it breaks higher here, but that's all below the EMA. Uh, you can't really take that. Nothing here. And then it just takes off. And again, these little tight, strong trends. If you recognize what these are, every time you get a good signal bar off the trend line, maybe you take these trades. But, uh, I mean, this is not really a strong trend kind of day. It's just making these moves in both directions. So I don't recommend them. I think you're better off to wait. And if you notice, she came off the highs, dropped back down all the way down here to, to the trend line, and you get a second entry long right there. I mean, it's a pretty easy to spot second entry right off the key entry point and that would have been a quick there's a higher low here but by that time you can tell it's a range you can't take that trade same thing here it's right into resistance you do get a failed breakout and that's really tempting but you got to go short right into the ema right there i mean you would figure it may come back down to here at a minimum and you may get a measured leg like this one so we actually get a little more than that. So it's another one you might argue to be green. And of course, that's your close outside on this khaki colored. And then this is the two legs down to a new low. And look at that nice reversal ball a long way away from the EMA. Maybe you take that one. But you hope for a higher lower reversal and you get a higher low way up here and that's on closes outside of this little green channel moving up moves to a new high and then you're going lower again and again it's just too sideways in here and just chopping around too much I, I don't see anything i like uh, i take that back there is a reversal here with a trap notice you get to close outside new low and then you get a first entry short you shoot up here, you come back, you get a second entry short, and then it reverses instantly. Uh, I don't think I would take that on the engulfing bar, but maybe you enter one tick above that one. And that would have been a nice little move for you. <coughs> it runs back up here and turns it. A, notice how every one of these turn at a different spot. There's just no consistency to it. So that makes it really hard to trade it as a range or anything. And um, there's no setup coming down here. That I really that I'd risk get an overshoot here high or low it doesn't break lower here unfortunately until you come up and you get a close outside and takes it a while but eventually makes a new hop this is kind of working down to sideways so again I, I don't see anything right there that is really worth risking uh, this trend line is not really in place yet so there's nothing right there um, and then you get a new trend that starts down. We do get a nice reversal here. Notice the new high. You try to go higher once. You come back right off the uh, EMA. Nice bearish bar. Failed second entry if it breaks lower. And that one makes a nice little run down. So that was a nice trade. And you don't notice you don't get to the lows here. And then you start heading back higher. So it's really hard to know if you're going to come back here. And maybe even get a break or if prices are just getting ahead of themselves and they're going to turn back down again so um, draw your little channel if it plays out and you get a good setup then maybe you take it uh, i'd prefer to see it off the normally i'd tell you you have to wait till it gets back to the trend line but because it didn't hit it down here uh, if we're still headed lower then it might turn down before it gets to the trend line and so notice the channel working up you get a break a new high and that is a second entry short right there in a very bearish bar. So maybe you take that one. If you understand what's going on, if prices would have come off this low and hadn't got back to this trend line, I'd tell you no way. But because it came up short and then it's coming up short up here, then that, that is a good indication that, hey, maybe we got further to go down. And then we drop all, we, it drops on down. That's a pretty good move right there. Drops down, comes back to the trend line, uh, gives you a first entry, comes back to the trend line again, gives you a second entry. And so uh, and notice that it tests the midline there as well. And that confirms this green 
channel here coming down. Uh, the only problem with this one, there's not a lot of room. I think there's just enough room to scalp out. I marked it green, but it's just not, I mean, there's some support there and you're taking a chance that it could bounce on you, but it is right off the key entry point. It is a second entry, uh, short as well. Notice the new low first entry, second entry, uh, drops on down, bounces off the lows, goes sideways, actually gets an overshoot here. And I'm pretty sure that's an overshoot because we were right in line up here. You can see the midlines right in line for the most part. Uh, no setups here to get short. You, there's a high or low there again you might take. But when you start trying to pick these bottoms, this is a futile type thing to do. And you'll end up getting burned. Uh, if you're going to take one, though, that's the one you would take on the the double bottom higher low way away from the EMA and plus it looks like an overshoot. So, uh, no other trade Two two sideways congested failed breakout. There is a lower high right there that you might trade that one cause it does close back inside this channel and you'd assume, Hey, maybe the channel is going to reassert itself, but I'd like to see it come back and bounce off of it and then go lower. But you might take that lower high as well. Again, it's not a sure thing, but it's something you might take. And and then it bounces here. But we don't know that that's a trend line, and we're still looking for a new low. Um, but when it comes back here and confirms it and gives you a second entry long, those first entry, second entry, uh, I'd wait for this to close. I wouldn't trade it as an engulfing bar or anything. And then we break out and fail. Again, nothing really. This just we just kind of come back into that range again there before we break out. And there is a trap right there. If it would have reversed on that bar, maybe you trade it. But when it took another bar, then it just looks like congestion by that point. Turns out to be a great move, but you just can't risk that. High or low here, but you can't go long right into all these highs. And there's just nothing else here. I mean, then you get the break, close outside, new low, and then two legs up to a new high. There's another second entry on a new high, but again, it makes a new high there. And sometimes they'll tick lower and go higher one more time, but it's one that you might consider because... Everything is in play to turn lower now. And this turns out to be a pretty nice move. And then nothing else as we go into 230. And we just continue to chop along the, that's the midline of the range, that dash dot. And so that's kind of a dangerous spot where prices are just flip-flopping back and forth. Pretty much the day was over at 230. So, yeah, not the greatest trading day. There's some trades in there. Um... Just not a good trading day. And maybe we'll start trending again here. Um, I mean, we've even had a couple of good trend days lately that weren't the greatest trading days because there was no consistency or really good setups where you need them to happen at. And it, we get days like that, and usually it's only a day here and there. And sometimes you go through periods where you get several days of it. So anyway, I'm not going to beat around the bush and drag this out. It's Monday. I'm going to wrap it up. We'll be back again to do it tomorrow. I'm done for today. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.